Saint Augustine comment we on Psalm 54 following For aliens have, have risen up against me, verse 3. What aliens? Was not David himself a Jew of the tribe of Judah? But the very place Ziph belonged to the tribe of Judah. It was of the Jews. How then, aliens? Not in city, not in tribe, not in kindred, but in flower. But see the Ziphites, see them for a time flourishing. With reason, alien sons, you amid the Ziphites hiding said what? Blessed the people whereof the Lord is its God. Out of this affection, this prayer is being sent forth into the ears of the Lord when it is said, For aliens have risen up against me. And mighty men have sought after my soul. For in a new manner, my brethren, they would destroy the race of holy men and the race of them that abstain from hoping in this world, or they have hope in this world. Certainly commingled they are, certainly together they live. Very much to one another are opposed these two sorts, the one of those that place no hope but in things secular, and in temporal felicity, and the other of those that do firmly place their hope in the Lord God. And thou, concordant, are these Ziphites, do not much trust to their concord. Temptations are wanting. When there shall have come any temptation, so as that a person may be reproved for the flower of the world, I say not to you he will quarrel with a bishop, but not even to the church herself will he draw near, lest there fall any part of the grass. Wherefore have I said these words, brethren? Because now gladly ye all hear in the name of Christ, and according as you understand, so ye shout out at the word. Ye would not indeed shout at it unless ye understood. This your understanding ought to be fruitful. But whether it is fruitful, temptation does try lest suddenly when you are said to be ours. Through temptation ye be found aliens, and it be said, Aliens have risen up against me, and mighty men have sought my soul. Be not that said which follows, they have not set forth God before their face. For when will he set God before his face, before whose eyes there is not but the world? Namely, how he may have coin upon coin, how flocks may be increased, how barns may be filled, how it may be said to his song, You have many good things, be merry, feast, take your fill. Doth he set before his face him that unto one so boasting and so blooming with the flower of the Ziphites says, Fool! that is, man not understanding, man unwise. This night shall be taken from you your soul. All these things which you have prepared, whose shall they be? Luke twelve twenty. For behold, God helps me, verse 4. Even themselves know not themselves, amid whom I am hiding. But if they too were to set God before their face, they would find in what manner God helps me. For all holy men are helped by God, but within, where no one sees. For in like manner, as the conscience of ungodly men is a great punishment, so a great joy is the very conscience of godly men. For our glory, this is, says the Apostle, the testimony of our conscience. 2 Corinthians 1.12 In this within, not in the flower of the Ziphites without, 
does glory that man that know that now says, For behold, God helps me. Surely thou afar off are to be those things which he promises this day have I a sweet and present help. Today, in my heart's joy, I find that without cause certain say, Who does show to us good things? For there is signed upon us the light of your countenance, O Lord. You have put pleasantness into my heart, not into my vineyard, not into my flock, not into my cask, not into my table, but into my heart. For behold, God helps me. How does he help you? And the Lord is the lifter up of my soul. Turn away evil things and to mine enemies. Verse 5. So however green they are, so however they flourish, for the fire they are being reserved. In your virtue destroy thou them, because to wit they flourish now, because to wit they spring up like grass, do not thou be a man unwise and foolish, so that by giving thought of these things thou perish for ever and ever. For turn thou away evil things unto mine enemies. For if you shall have place in the body of David himself, in his virtue he will destroy them. These men flourish in the felicity of the world, perish in the virtue of God. Not in the same manner as they flourish do they also perish. For they flourish for a time, perish for everlasting. Flourish in unreal good things, perish in real torments. In your strength destroy whom in your weakness you have endured. Voluntarily I will sacrifice to you. Verse 6. Who can even understand this good thing of the heart at another's speaking thereof, unless in himself he has tasted it? What is voluntarily I will sacrifice to you? For what sacrifice here shall I take, brethren? Or what worthily shall I offer to the Lord for his mercy? Victims shall I seek from flock of sheep, ram shall I select, for any bull in the herds shall I look out. Frank incense indeed from the land of the Sabaeans shall I bring. What shall I do? What offer? Except that whereof he speaks. Sacrifice of praise shall honor me. Wherefore then voluntarily? Because truly I love that which I praise. I praise God and in the self. Same praise I rejoice, in the praise of himself I rejoice, at whom being praised I blush not. For he is not praised in the same manner as by those who love the theatrical follies, is praised either by a charioteer or a hunter or actor of any kind, and by their praises other praises are invited, are exhorted, to shout together. And when all have shouted of times, if their favorite is overcome, they are all put to the blush. Not so is our God, be he praised with the will, loved with charity. Let it be gratuitous or voluntary that he is loved and that he is praised. What is gratuitous? Himself, for the sake of himself not for the sake of something else. For if you praise God in order that he may give you something else, no longer freely do you love God. You would blush if your wife for the sake of riches were to love you, and perchance if poverty should befall you, should begin to think of adultery, seeing that therefore you would be loved by your partner freely. Will you for anything else love God? What reward are you to receive of God, of covetous man? Not earth for you, but himself he keeps, who made heaven and earth. 
Voluntarily I will sacrifice to you. Do it not of necessity. For if for the sake of anything else you praise God, out of necessity you praise. These things also which he has given because of the giver are good things. For he gives entirely, he gives these temple things and to certain men to their good, to certain men to their harm, after the height and depth of his judgments. Voluntarily I will sacrifice to you. Wherefore voluntarily? Because gratis. What is gratis? And I will confess to your name, O Lord, for, t- for it is a good thing. For nothing else but because a good thing it is. Doth he say, I will confess to your name, O Lord, because thou givest me fruitful manners, manners, because thou givest me gold and silver, because thou givest me extended riches, abundant money, most exalted dignity? Nay, but what? For it is a good thing, nothing I find better than your name. For out of all tribulation you have delivered me. Verse 7. For this cause I have perceived how good a thing is your name. For if this I were able before tribulation to acknowledge, perchance for me there had been no need of them. But tribulation has been applied for admonition. Admonition has has redounded to your praise. For I should not have understood where I was, except of my weakness I had been admonished. Out of all tribulation, therefore, you have delivered me. And upon my enemies my eye has looked back, upon those Ziphites my eye has looked back. Ye, their flower, I have passed over in loftiness of heart, and to you I have come, and thence, I, and thence I have looked back upon them, and have seen that all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of grass. Isaiah 46 As in a certain place is also said, I have seen the ungodly man to be exalted and raised up like the cedars of Lebanon. I passed by, and lo, he was not. Wherefore, he was not. Because you have passed by. What is because you have passed by? Because not to no purpose have you heard lift up your heart. Because not on earth where you would have rotted, you have remained. Because you have lifted your soul to God and you have mounted beyond the cedars of Lebanon and from that elevation that hast observed. And lo, he was not. And you have sought him, and there has not been found place for him. No longer is labor before you, because you have entered into the sanctuary of God, and hast understood for the last things. So also here thus he concludes, And upon my enemies, and upon mine enemies my eye has looked back. This do ye therefore, brethren, with your souls, lift up your hearts, Sharpen the edge of your mind, learn truly to love God, learn to despise the present world, learn voluntarily to sacrifice the offerings of praise. To the end, that mounting beyond the flower of the grass, you may look back upon your enemies. <clears throat>